Whether you have an employment, criminal, family, corporate, or personal injury matter, legal issues can be puzzling. The lawyers at Devery, Smith & Frank make all the pieces fit together. Welcome to Real Estate 101, where today we're going to talk a little bit about employment law, and I'm pleased to be joined by Marty Rabinovich of Devery Smith Frank LLP. Marty, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Okay, Marty, so I want to start today's show and I want to ask you, why is it important for someone who's just been terminated from their job to speak with a, an employment lawyer? Well, it's very important for an employee who's just lost their job to understand their employment rights and to, and to, and to ensure that uh, the severance package they've been offered is uh, fair and in accordance with the laws and a lawyer can certainly help with that. And also, employers will often not make their best offer the first time, so an, so an employment lawyer can help an employee negotiate for a better severance package. Okay, so why is it important for an employer to speak with an employment lawyer before terminating an employee? Well, an employer may actually have just cause at law to terminate an employee, in which case they would not be required to give that employee a severance package. So the employer should speak to a lawyer to determine whether or not there is just cause to, determine the, uh, to, to terminate the employment or whether the termination would be without cause, in which case a severance package would be required. The employment lawyer could also help the employer to craft the severance package to make it suitable to the severance package that they would like to offer. So for example, the employer may want to pay the severance package as a lump sum, or they may want to make the payment by salary continuance. Okay, so what are some of the rights uh, for employees here in Ontario under the uh, uh, Employment Standards Act? The employees have a number of rights under the Employment Standards Act in Ontario. Uh, first, if they are terminated from their employment without cause, they would be entitled to uh, termination pay, which is normally about one week per year of service, as long as the employee has worked for at least three months. Employees may also be entitled to severance pay, which is another week per year of service, as long as they've worked for at least five years and the employer has a payroll of $2.5 million or more. Um, employees are also entitled to uh, two weeks of vacation time as long as they've worked for at least uh, one year, so it's two weeks per year. And they're entitled to vacation pay, which is 4% at least of their gross wage. And there's also a number of leaves to which an employee is entitled under the Act. So it's things like pregnancy leave, parental leave, uh, personal emergency leave, family medical leave, and so on. So you mentioned cause. Um, what is the difference legally uh, between being terminated with cause and without cause? Termination with cause essentially means that the employer has a valid legal reason to end the employment relationship. So if the employee has engaged in acts of dishonesty, has stolen from the employer, uh, just doesn't come to work, uh, is insubordinate, uh, those may amount to just cause and the employer would not have to uh, provide a severance package. A termination without cause means that there is no valid legal reason for the termination and the employer would have to provide the employee with a severance package. So reasons that would amount to a termination with cause are things like a job being eliminated, uh, restructuring, um, and, and those sorts of things. Maybe uh, if an employee just doesn't get along with their co-workers, um, that would still likely be a termination without cause. All right, Marty, so what exactly is constructive dismissal? Constructive dismissal occurs when the employer unilaterally changes a key or fundamental term in the employment contract. So it could, it could be something like a, a huge cut in wages, it could be, a, or a demotion, for example. And uh, a constructive dismissal is essentially treated like an express wrongful dismissal. So an employee who has been constructively dismissed would be entitled to a severance package in the same way that an employee who has been outright wrongfully dismissed. Constructive dismissal can also occur if the employer creates a poisoned working environment and doesn't take the proper steps to cure that. So for example, if an employee is getting bullied and harassed in the workplace and the employer is not taking sufficient steps to deal with that, 
that employee would probably have a claim for constructive dismissal. So in regards to the severance package, what factors are important in determining the severance package when there is a termination? There's three factors that the lawyer should look at. And the first is the employee's entitlement under the Employment Standards Act, which again is the provincial legislation. So there may be a termination and a severance pay entitlement. So that's the first thing the lawyer should look at, and that's going to be the employee's minimum entitlement. The second factor to look at is the employment contract. Sometimes there will be termination provisions in the contract which will specifically set out the length of notice period. So for example, the contract could say that if an employee is wrongfully dismissed, they're entitled to two weeks per year of service or three weeks per year of service. So if there's a provision and there's no reason for it to be unenforceable, then that provision would govern. And finally, we have to look at the common law, which is uh, court decisions. Uh, the, the courts have, uh, have essentially found that the minimum standards set out in the Employment Standards Act are too low, and uh, the courts have awarded what we call reasonable notice in terms of the severance package. The starting point for common law reasonable notice is about one month per year of service, but that can be either increased or decreased based on uh, four factors. And the four factors are age, the length of service, the type of work, and how easy or difficult it's going to be for that employee to find a new job having regard to their education and training in the field. All right, so here in Ontario, um, is there a law that requires employees to give their employers notice? And if so, how much notice do they need to give if they're quitting their job? Well, at common law, uh, similar to the employer's requirement to give an employee reasonable notice if the employer wants to terminate the employee, the courts have found that an employee does have to give an employer reasonable notice if they want to quit. Um, generally, if you're talking about a uh, lower level or administrative type position and the employee gives a couple of weeks, it will probably not be an issue. The issues, however, arise when you have employees who are in senior positions, so senior managers, senior executives, who may have what we call a fiduciary duty to their employer, which essentially is a higher degree of loyalty than the average employee. And especially for those employees, they need to be careful before just uh, quitting because often it will take the employer several months to replace those higher level employees. Okay, Marty, so what other types of claims should be considered uh, with a wrongful dismissal claim? There's a few types of claims that should be considered. The first is a human rights claim. The Human Rights Code in Ontario prevents employers from discriminating against employees on several grounds, including things like disability, race, religion, place of origin, and so on. So in particular, if an employee was ill or had a disability and required certain employment restrictions as a result of that disability, the lawyer should consider whether the employee's illness or disability was a factor in the termination. And if it was, that would give rise to a human rights claim under the Human Rights Code. Another type of claim that should be considered is a claim for, uh, for bad faith termination. And essentially, uh, if, if the manner of termination uh, arises to what we call a, an independently actionable tort, which is essentially a wrong that the employer could commit against the employee. If the employer commits any of these wrongs in the manner of termination, then that could give rise to a different claim. And finally, the lawyer should uh, consider claiming for benefits for the employee throughout the notice period. So for example, uh, health and dental benefits uh, do need to be considered do need to be continued throughout the notice period so that should certainly form part of the claim. Okay Marty so for today's final question do you have any last tips for employers um, in order to prevent litigation? Well essentially if you're an employer and you want to avoid litigation it's really as simple as complying with the laws so for example for severance packages uh, the employer should offer reasonable severance packages which comply with both the Employment Standards Act uh, and the common law. Um, the employer should also have uh, good uh, policies and procedures in, pla in place to deal with employee complaints. In particular, there should be a harassment policy in place uh, under Bill 168, which now makes it mandatory. 
And finally, it's just a matter of keeping, keeping your employees happy, having uh, office parties, social outings, and that sort of thing to keep morale high. All right, Marty, good stuff. Thanks for coming on today's show, and I hope to see you again sometime in the future. Well, thanks very much for having me, Joe. If you're an employee who's been recently fired from their job, or if you're an employer who needs some advice about your workplace, please don't hesitate to call me on the number on your screen. So there you have it. If you're having any employment issues and need the help of an employment lawyer, get in contact with Marty Robinovich. Stay with us on our next episode where I'm going to be joined by John Schumann, where we're going to talk a little bit about spousal support. I'm your host, Joe Tracera. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.